So today I am recording this podcast from enemy territory. I am right here in historical downtown Dawson Creek, British Columbia. This is solidly Canucks territory. I am going to be the most popular guy in town today, but that's not what I'm here to talk about, nor am I even here to talk about my sweet new Halifax Highlanders hat that I literally just bought at the, uh, at the at the Dawson Creek Salvation Army. No, today I'm going to revisit something that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. And actually, it's a pretty good time to revisit that, given that this guy just had his first point as an Edmonton Oiler last night. So we're going to talk a little bit again about Corey Perry. Because we actually know a little bit more about what went on with Corey Perry in Chicago than we did the last time that I talked about this. So just to recap, the last time we talked about this, I basically said that I wasn't super excited to have Corey Perry joining the team based on some of the uncertainty surrounding what had gone on in Chicago. A couple of other issues associated with that also. I mean, his age is also kind of an issue. You know, when you do a player reclamation project of any kind, usually you want to have a few extra years left over at the end of it. But the Edmonton Oilers, they did decide, Ken Holland, he decided to go ahead and do that signing. So Corey Perry is here now, and we owe it to that player to give him a chance. I think that's a pretty reasonable rule. He signed with the team. He does get a chance. <laughs> now, as per what went on with him in Chicago, uh, we do know, actually, at this rate, quite a bit more about that now. And uh, I have to, I, I feel like now I actually have to walk quite a bit of that back. I mean, there are a few details that are really known about it, but it sounds like what basically got Corey Perry turfed out of Chicago was that he basically, he asked a reporter if she wanted to have relations with him. You know, that's it. That's all he did. I guess he saw something that he liked, decided that he wanted a certain something, and he decided to ask for it. I mean, there are a few things that maybe we could stand to know. I mean, we don't necessarily know how he did it. it sounds like we really don't know if he was over persistent or if he was a pest or if he was over aggressive about it or if he was obnoxious about it. And yeah, I mean, a few of those things could factor in. It could maybe change you know, the, the validity of the decision to terminate his contract over that. Uh, but I, I got to say that it's a little bit, it's a little bit stunning, you know, to see these, you know, these, these just like the, the like the, like the, the, the incredible back and forth in this Chicago Blackhawks franchise. You know, this was a team that was willing to turn a black eye. It was willing to turn, pardon me, a blind eye, you know, to the, uh, to the abuse of Kyle Beach, if it was going to win them a Stanley cup and, now suddenly they're running Corey Perry out of Chicago, you know, for asking for a consensual relationship. <laughs> like that's, uh, yeah, it's 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 like watching. It's it's like watching somebody flip over, you know, from from being like the biggest chud to being the biggest cuck. It's the, it's the only thing that a person can say about it. And in light of some of the other things that we are learning more about over these past couple of weeks, I mean, wow, just what a, what a time to be alive. I mean, let's be real about this. I mean, based on what we know, this is not, you know, this is not the Hockey Canada scandal. You know, this is not Carter Hart, and Dylan Dubé, and Michael McLeod, you know, and Cal Foot, and uh, who's the last guy, Formanton, you know, basically uh, assaulting some woman in a hotel room in London. You know, this is a guy just asking for a consensual relationship. If, there, if all that happened was that he asked and the reporter said no, that's exactly where it should have ended. If that's all that happened, well, then there is literally no cause to take it any further than that. He asked. She said no. If he accepted that and moved on, then it's over. I just think it's sad to say that there is, you know, in my opinion, there is definitely, there seems to be 
you know, a growing segment of the population that have become so intimidated and so cucked that they seem to think that you're not even allowed to ask anymore. It does just sort of seem that when it comes to these sorts of issues, that it's like we just can't seem to find like a nice little happy medium where we just do the right thing. Because we saw what went on with Hockey Canada. We saw that the wrong thing was done. We saw that a lot of money was spent doing exactly the wrong thing. But then we have this whole situation. And it's like, yeah, suddenly we're, we're going to do the wrong thing again. It's like we're going to cut this guy's contract, run him out of town, just for asking. Just for asking. I mean, of course, unless there was more to it, in which case my mind could change about that. But based on what we know right now, it sounds like it was, it was just for asking. Like we're just moving back and forth between these two extremes where we're doing the wrong thing each time. Why can't we just do the right thing every time? Obviously, in the case of Hockey Canada, the right thing to do <laughs> was for that to have never happened in the first place. I have some theories about what went on, but I'm not going to share them here because, quite frankly, we just don't know enough about this case right now. You know, based on the facts that are known, I think it would be irresponsible to get into that. But obviously, the first right thing would have been for that to have never happened. The second right thing would have been for Hockey Canada to never have covered that up. And then obviously, in the case of, this, of, of Corey Perry and the Chicago Blackhawks, the right thing to do, if all he did was ask, and she said no, and it ended there, well, then exactly the right thing to do is literally to just shrug and move on. They're two consenting adults. He asked. She said, no, it's over. But instead, somebody made the decision to do the wrong thing in an organization that we have seen has developed, a, has a history of doing the wrong thing. And by the way, in Rocky words, based on things that he said last year, they're not even really all that interested in talking about how they have done the wrong thing. You know, last year when he told some reporters, like, we're not going to, we're not going to and talk about Kyle Beach anymore. <laughs> that just makes it all the more shocking that this organization has this little self-awareness and then still manages to turn around and get this so wrong going the other way. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, Corey Perry, he's a lot more welcome in an Oilers jersey than he was before we knew that whole thing was going on. At least in my opinion.